enjoyed your visit, although well, it was a bit blustery, wasn't it? Sitting around the table and discussing things with the uh, advisory committee, they were puzzled that they feel that um, you should have received more objections. They believe you have received rather more objections than you've seen in the report before you. Uh, possibly 10. And it is only a small community, frankly. Members will be aware that when we discuss with constituents uh, recommendations for approval and planning concerns that are given, there's often a lot of confusion and puzzlement about how such things come to be. In this case, comment has been made that the planning history of this particular site would suggest it's absolutely perfectly possible to build a dwelling, a new one, in the Green Belt. We just have to do it slowly. This barn was given permission in 2006 as a barn. It's not an ancient part of the conservation area as you would have seen when you looked at it. Chair, this, this is an application for one dwelling. It's not going to address any housing shortages, it's not going to be an affordable home. And you see references to things like that in planning policy. When you study the planning history and the report members, you would have seen a great many items. And you could have wondered what they were all doing there. A lot of them don't apply to this property at all, and they also include duplicates because there's listed building concerns as well as planning permission for the neighbouring property. So you, when you scan down that long list, you're looking for the items that begin great Bay Tree Farm. There's one on the first page listed, two on the second, two on the third. They apply variously to the barn and seen at the site visit, conversion of barns to add to Bay Tree Farm House and the stables, some of which you never saw in the visit. In fact, aside from the applicant's property, the whole list just refers to one additional property in the conservation area being created as a residential place, and that's Elderbury, and that was about 20 years ago, um, bringing it back into use a barn that was about 300 years old, in disrepair and not being used. This recommendation is adjacent to the Beautree Farmhouse, which is a listed building with an ancient hedgerow which we looked at. And it is reassuring to hear that the car port is proposed to be two metres away from it. Um, as members saw on Monday, the barn is quite new. And uh, from 1927 to 2002, there was a, there was a Dutch barn there, a tall, narrow, um, steel frame structure, which was entirely open on the sides. <coughs> the boarded barn that was built in 2003 and began to commission in 2006 has seen a few amendments over the last few years. Solid walls built inside the, the boarding and roof lights added, which did seem to surprise the public <coughs> so on site on the dead. Chair, this is within the conservation area. Frankly, conservation area was noted in the conservation area character appraisal and management plan for being one of the best surrounded by one of the best preserved open field enclosure patterns that remains in the district. And it states, in the unlikely development of any, and sorry, I'll try again, in the unlikely event of any new development, including agricultural buildings, there should be a strong presumption in favour of using traditional materials such as natural sandstone, red brick, and slate, together with any distinctive local details. Traditional materials should be sympathetic to the character of the conservation area. It also states that new buildings should match the floor to ceiling heights and general proportions of neighbouring historic buildings. And uh, if members were to be shown the uh, plan which has been submitted, which is called, I think, Site Plan, you can see on there that there are various other buildings within the village which are um, outlined. You can see that they are, tend to be long and narrow and not entirely same proportions as this proposed one. Policy CH12 describes a principal planning objective for the area to preserve a compact settlement form separate and distinct from nearby areas and to retain new fine features of scale, layout, design, and materials. Um, just a small point, but the report in front of you speaks of the existing barn having a hard surface area to the south where the proposed carport will be located. Now it appears it's not quite where we thought it was, but it isn't to the south, I don't believe. Um, and at the moment where we're looking at is on grass and there's not an existing hard surface. So when the dwelling is complete, what you went and looked at and stood in, the surroundings will look very different. Um, there will be some hard 
landscaping because there will be a drive. You know what's outside your own house? There's the old bin and, and other things. This will not look anymore like part of the green belt. So the local plan authority does have a duty to pay special, special attention to preserving or enhancing the character or appearance of the conservation area. And uh, so I would like to just draw your attention to, if you are minded to approve this application, policy GB3, reuse of buildings in the green belt policy, says when granting consent for the non-agricultural reuse of an agricultural building in the green belt, the local planning authority may impose a condition withdrawing limited development rights for new agricultural development where it is necessary to prevent the proliferation of agricultural buildings. So I ask you to bear that in mind, members, and thank you for your time. Thank you. <coughs> so to committee now. Anybody like to speak? Could I look at the front end, please? As was and the proposal. Can you overdraw the This building here will be removed. In terms of what you can see from Frankly Road, all of these elevations remain as present. So it will still give the um, external appearance of the bar, the bar as, it, as it looks now. Um, and then the, the main um, elevations, so the, the glazing along here and here, and the roof lights all face um, the open window, uh, open window the, the open field um, at the back. Um, just to pick up on the point, some of the points that Councillor Clements was talking about in terms of um, uh, materials and things. I think the policy that she was actually referring to relates to new build and not um, conversion. Um, and we have covered the issue of the removal of limited development rights, both in terms of residential um, um, PD and, and agriculture. So we have looked at that issue when considering this application. In terms of how long it's been there, it's been there since 2006, so it's nine years. Can you, can you just tell me the difference uh, in square footage? Uh, how much bigger is it? Is it 5, 10, 20 percent bigger or, or what? It's an extra 19 square meters. Does anybody else like to make comments? Well, sorry. I'm going to read it first. Yeah, um, I Oops. Yeah, I went on the site visit and I just like to say it. Um, they've already done a property very similar to the one that they're going to be doing already, I um, think about 15 years ago, which was you know, absolutely fine. I didn't see 
see any, it says here about representations that lots of privacy to adjacent properties. I didn't see that at all on the site visit of what properties that's related to. It also said that the barn is still in use. Well, when we got there, it seemed that the barn isn't, barn isn't still in use. Um, yeah, I just think it, I have no objection to it. <laughs> If, I, if I'm picking up the inference from the water councillor's sort of contribution, it's sort of, um, and the thoughts were going through my mind on the day, almost that the barn was some kind of stalking horse development uh, to lead to this ultimate end of getting a residential property within the green belt. That's not going to be very easy to prove, I feel. That's an opinion, that, that's a view taken. Um, now I know that it's been there for nine years. Um, it's a very long term story horse, if, if that's what it is. Again, that can make it very difficult to make a judgment that that, that was the case. And I don't think planning will probably allow you to, to make those sort of inferences anyway. But I understand why people would be fearful. It is a beautiful area. It is a fantastic uh, little community. So I think the logic in people's mind is build a bar, and in 10 years' time, you can turn it into a house and, and, and completely change the character. I think this committee should have enough about it to, to see that come if it came again in the future. I hope it would. Perhaps it, perhaps it, it wasn't um, the intention anyway. So uh, it's difficult. It, the thing that sort of put me to bow to, to go in favour is that there is also a removal of not a very pretty outbuilding as part of this development, and that is written into the application, as I understand it, um, for, from the officers. So we removed that sort of the square that people can see. We didn't go inside with it. Not a very pretty uh, outbuilding goes, and probably a very well designed and, uh, and lovely house uh, facing onto, uh, onto, onto the green belt uh, is going to be places. So my view is that it would be difficult to come up for reasons of refusal, that would be defendable. Um, by an inspector who will look at the hard nosed legislation, you can convert farm buildings into properties in the green belt. I guess that's aimed at you know, helping people in the agricultural area sort of be more sustainable. So I think it's, it, it, I'm edging towards approval, but I completely make my mind up yet if anyone else wants to convince me. Anybody else like to, David? Thank you, Chair. I did uh, go to the site visit. I know the history of the, uh, the site well. I think we had a site visit when the barn was uh, first proposed and built. Uh, it squeezed through the committee by a majority vote, I've got to say. Uh, like Steve, uh, it stuck in my mind the history of what's gone on behind it and what's happened in the, in the past, leading up to what we've got today. Those members that were there on the day will know that I only asked one question when we were on the site. And that question was the hay in the barn when was it last oh, year? Three years ago. No, no, no. He said it was used up until this year by the local farmer. <coughs> but in my mind, that means it's not a redundant farm building. It's a building that's been in constant use. He used it himself, he did say, up until three years ago. <coughs> But it had been used by the local farmer with hay on pellets. That was his response to me. So that part of the criteria falls straight away. And I think the majority of what this report is based on is because it's a redundant farm building. I can't see that as a redundant farm building. I, as Steve has highly eloquently stated before, we look at the history of what's gone on. And we've come to a point where we've come to. And uh, if we're relying on it being a redundant farm building, in my mind, it's not a redundant farm building. And I, I, I can't accept the recommendation. Take the other points in the uh, supplementary guidance 15, well, that's the one about redundant uh, buildings. UDP CH2, establish general requirements of developments and conservation. Uh, new developments should demonstrate that it preserves or enhances the distinctive character. It doesn't. It's completely against what's already there. And you can see that just by a square block plan that's there. That's totally against <coughs> what's, what's down in our policy. So there's two particular issues that I'm not happy with. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure they're really delved into. But 
was what we find more. Uh, but our biological significance of it is what I think track on the other side. That's my view of the model thinking. Anybody else like to speak? The officer's recommendation is for approval. Do you have a proposer? Trina Johnson. Mm -hmm. A seconder? Irene Williams. All those in favour? There's no reason for refusal, so I've got nothing to go for. Anyway. Next, I'm going to move the reason.
by the Commission is law for the erection of a new drug, a new detached dwelling south of 6th Central Avenue in Brom Road. The new dwelling would be three bedrooms and the principal elevation is facing onto Central Avenue uh, central <coughs> to the rear. The distance from the new dwellings to those on the opposite side of Central Avenue, so the front elevation of the property is here, so the distance to those properties on the opposite side of Central Avenue is 30 metres, so that's well in excess of the French one which is normally expected. To the rear, the dwelling has the appearance of a dormer bungalow, um, and at the front, it has the appearance of a more traditional two story uh, building. The distance from the rear elevation to the rear boundary, uh, so that's the length of the rear garden, is some 23 metres, with the properties along Quality Park located even further away. So that's those properties here. Therefore, interface distances are achieved uh, at the rear. There are no windows on the north face of elevation, with the exception of a small landing window, which is not a habitable room. Similarly, there are no first floor windows on the south face of elevation, maintaining privacy to two central avenue. The ground floor is already screened by existing vegetation and boundary treatment. Therefore, they are not considered to be any issues relating to loss of privacy or immunity. There are a mix of house types in the area, including two story detached dwellings, bungalows, and others. Each design is different, so there is no dominant house type that defines the character of the area. Whilst the subdivision of the plot will result in smaller plot size, there is not considered to be, this is not considered to be detrimental to the character of the area, as there are similar plot sizes within close proximity, and indeed smaller ones as can, as can be seen. Our street parking provision is, provided, is, is proposed and a good sized garden area is retained at the rear. The proposals are considered to comply with policy HS4 and as such are recommended for approval as a qualified petition rejection. Is the petitioner present? Yes. Would you like to come and state your name? And address. Yes. Yes. And then you have up to five minutes to speak. Thank you. Um, my name is Brenda Ashton. I live at 5 Central Avenue. I have some photographs to distribute. May I? Yes. 
if I'm going against yes, them. Yes, come on. Okay. Um, when you have a central avenue, in case you buy supplies, you have passed along an ordinary rural road, cropped up and containing lots of 60s style flats, then you enter the green tree light avenue, which is central avenue, leading to Dimsdale Nature Reserve and SSSI. We feel that such a major development of, well, I'm going to continue with four houses here, yeah. okay, of, of four houses and four entrances on the avenue would involve creating an area which would be unsympathetic to the appearance of the road. We need to, I'm sorry, we can't discuss that one there. Sorry. Yeah, where is the application for one house? One house. One we house can only is. discuss that. And that's all we can talk about.
well, when I'm like, I can't do this without the whole child. Okay. okay. Um, when you enter Central Avenue, it takes you by surprise. You, you'll have passed along the busy area, uh, propped up and you can say containing a block of 60 staff. <coughs> then you enter a green tree lined avenue, which is, I'm sorry, I don't want to repeat myself, but this is really important. But this is one piece of Bromborough that stands out in some way, which is Central Avenue, leading to Dimsdale Nature Reserve and SSSI. We feel that such a major development of four houses and four entrances on the avenue would involve creating an area which would be unsympathetic <coughs> to the appearance of the road and detrimental to the quality of the life of the residents. The actual work for the proposed dwelling and alterations would involve pulling down hedges, and if the site is to be developed as proposed, the attractive sandstone wall would be pulled down. Also, future plans would involve the demolition of the existing attractive house, which was built over a century ago, with potential harm to mature trees on the, in the avenue from lorries and other vehicles passing to and fro, not to mention stress to residents' lives Many people appreciate this avenue and the oasis of calm and peace that it provides in this area. They use it as an access route to Dinsdale and enjoy its features and community. A development of a significant number of houses and the accompanying increased amount of residents on permanent vehicles entering and leaving from the proposed four entrances off the road would disrupt this community and take something away from the world that has been there for a century. We understand that the site has potential for limited development, although four houses in total seem to be open development, and I realise that um, that's something that uh, you've objected to. Nevertheless, we also know that the green spaces and attractive buildings are valued in rural and the country as a whole. Look at the parks and green areas in our great cities, which have been preserved and enjoyed by local people and visitors over centuries. Consider the historic and or traditional style houses to delight and interest millions of visitors each year. Our heritage and history are important. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
and the house would still remain on a substantial plot. There is no loss of road parking, off-road parking, and our new dwelling will create off-road parking for at least two vehicles plus garage space. Any new driveway to the proposed new dwelling will be situated between the trees in Central Avenue with no impact on the existing fixtures on the street scene. We have taken great care in designing our home and feel our plans meet all the required criteria. With the design and density in keeping with the area, I feel it would have no negative impact on Central Avenue or the surrounding area. Thank you for listening and for giving me the opportunity to talk. Thank you, Brad. Board Councillor. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, not the easiest on this one, is it? <laughs> um, what I would um, say is that clearly members of the two have regard to um, the bottom uh, sentence on page 68 of the policy contract. Um, the proposal being on scale which relates to well to land property and If you look at the map, clearly most of the property in the Central Avenue are attached in spacious gardens. And that's the fact of the matter. Um, I thank the applicant for clarifying something because I was going to make sure that um, if the planning committee was minded to approve the application, that the issue of the uh, telephone call and the post box be addressed by, by a condition uh, with regard to that, but the applicant has indicated that, um, that no fixtures would be um, involved in providing the driveway. Uh, I will, however, refer fair members to the bottom paragraph, not the bottom sentence, but the bottom paragraph of page 69, which is fairly clear that uh, if you sign an access statement it says that to the north of this proposed site um, that it indicates that there's a possibility of building, rebuilding two to three new developments. And so I'm referring members to the report, not to hearsay, but what the report says in response to the so, you know, I, I would ask you to refer to that. I find, I think you will find it extremely difficult to plan the committee to review this application. But, however, I would ask you to bear in mind that bottom paragraph of page 69, please. It's just a point that was raised at the last end of that. When we did go to the site visit, uh, I walked the front page at the end before we left. I was looking at the boundaries. And it was the position of the um, post box, the telegraph pole, and it, it seemed to didn't, it didn't seem to fit right with the you know, proposal or that was uh, the, the, the time. I'm sure hearing what's been said, the entrance is going to be in the correct place. It will be detrimental to the street scene in, in that respect. So I've got no objection to this application, Chair. Steve? Well, again, went on site visit. Um, I do have concern about these type of developments, um, where the area is well established with, very, with plot sizes. There is nothing in this application that worries me about any detrimental uh, effect on that particularly nice area, but it is a particularly nice area uh, and very pleasant area to live. But you can look, you know, look at that all day. That lot size is compatible to everything in the area, position and wise, uh, it would fit in well with the area. It is a perfectly logical, reasonable application. Ownership and ownership of other people's land is not a planning issue. It, we, we are asked to look at the planning principles treat that as a piece of paper, is it right or would it be fitting for that developer to go there on that site? And the answer has to be overwhelmingly yes. Uh, you know, if we have to live and do our planning committees based on rumours, we would never get a planning application through. We deal with lots of funds of us and I, I, I'm convinced it's a reasonable application. Any other members? Yeah, I'm just going to 
Anybody else like to speak? And more questions, Joe? Just, just to finish, I can see where the confusion there is with the, um, the house number six, but based on what we've got in front of us, we have to say I can't see any reason to confuse it. Um, and as Mr. says, you know, predetermination, we can't predetermine what's going to come on number six, should anything come on number six, that will have to be decided if and when we, it does come. Do we have, I mean, office recommendation is for approval. Do we have a proposer? Yeah. David Johnson, seconder. Yeah. Trevor Johnson. All those in favour? Unanimous. Yes. That is approved. That's very, very well. Next application is item number 12 on the agenda. It's Wood End Cottage, Marsh Lane, Ireland. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Chair. This application is a resubmission of a previously approved application for the change of use of existing stables and office building into three dwellings. That application was approved in July 2013. This application seeks concern for some minor amendments to the early approval. Namely, changes to windows, the, additions of, the addition of chimneys and porches, and, and an additional floor to part of the building. The addition of the first floor to part of the L-shaped building mirrors an existing first floor in the opposite corner. So there is an existing first floor here. It's proposed to put a new first floor here. So there is the, uh, the L-shape. Some additional window openings and some conservation style roof lights and roof slide that will appear flush with the roof will also be added. However, these additional openings are not considered to detract from the overall appearance of these buildings, which will still be as converted to agricultural buildings. Finally, a small extension is proposed for the smaller of the two existing buildings, that's, built, that's this building here at the top of the size of the extensions over here. Former office, that's the former office building. The extension will be 2 by 6 metres by 3 by 6 metres and it's not considered to represent any harm to the scale and appearance of the original building. The development retains an open corridor appearance and conditions removing permitted development rights relating to extensions, alterations, means of enclosure, and outbuildings are proposed. It's considered that the proposed amendments will not result in any greater impact than compared to the 2013 approval and will not result in any harm to the openness of the rebuild. The application is recommended for approval. There is no additional objection. There is no objection. Thank you. 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 Th